I am going to show you how to set up your own settings in Critical Ops by yourself. You all asked me about this after my last CEOPS video from this series. How do I find my settings? How do I know if I'm a low sense player or a high sense one? Where do I change my settings? So now you are going to learn how to do it by your own. When you enter in the settings, you see 5 tabs. Let's begin with the easiest one, the audio. Set the master volume to 100%. Why do we set it to max? Because we need to hear every sound from the game. If we set our device audio to max and set the master volume to a lower percentage, it should be the same thing. But I think you don't get the full audio while doing this because some people that I played with complained about poor audio with their phones on max volume, but their game at 80 or 85%. And the music volume, you set it to whatever you want, it's only the lobby music, it doesn't affect the game sound. General. Go to target frame rate and set it to max so you have the full advantage of your screen. I suggest you use hard opacity if you don't know your binds, but please don't set it to max. It's taking your screen visibility and you may not see players because of your binds being too bright. Now we can go to gameplay. Weapon size. These settings is only if you want to see the skins better and bigger on your screen. I suggest you don't go with this on max because it would take too much of your screen and then you will have lower visibility. Field of view. I do not recommend using this setting. It's only going to make your gameplay worse because you will see less in front of you and more on the sides which is not optimal because you want to see your enemy in front of you bigger so you can aim properly and hit him. You don't want a smaller enemy. Dynamic crosshair only helps you see the recoil of every gun. While you are jumping, moving around, you see a bigger crosshair. And if you move slowly or stop moving, you have a better accuracy. This is the best setting for new players. Crosshair size. I suggest you keep it on 30%. It's the smallest crosshair. You see the enemy perfectly. You see every mistake that you do while shooting and if you are using a higher crosshair size, it will just show you a fake reflection of you with a better aim. I explained everything in this video. You have a link in the description. Custom color. I don't recommend this to new players or anyone. You can't see perfectly with different colors other than white. White reflects all the other colors. It's the best color if you want to see where you are shooting. Hit marker. I suggest you keep it on. You see if you hit your enemy with a nade or if you hit your enemy while picking fast. Damage indicators. This should be on small. You see when you hit, it's not taking your whole screen visibility and you can react and shoot without any visual disturbance. Quick swap is only by preference. I use it on primary weapon because I can quick swap to knife if it was the previous item in my hand or I can quick swap to pistol it helps me more to not forget what weapon I switched to last time. And often the primary weapon does the most damage. Auto equip weapon on pickup. I put it on because when I drop my gun I want to instantly have it in my hand and kill my enemy. But if you are in a clutch and you step on a gun it can ruin your round so test it and set it how however you want. I never got in those kind of situations, so it's on for me. The last two are not so important, so let's go to the graphics. I suggest you do this trick, set your graphics to lowest, then apply. So now you have your render distance on minimum, that means you don't see the bullets that you shoot in the glass, etc. You can disable your environmental particles and the other one too, so you have the best visibility and then manually set your graphics to whatever you want to and now you have perfect visibility even on max graphics. If you have FPS problems, here are some settings that you can try for better and stable FPS while keeping the graphics good looking. If you are on iOS, set the anti-aliasing to zero. Turn off particles and environmental particles and boom your game looks almost the same but you have way better FPS. Ok, here is where the tricky part begins and if you've made it to this part you're amazing because you by the end of the video will have the best settings by yourself so subscribe, like and let's go to the controls. Aim assist, why not have it to 100%? It helps your control, stability and is good for improving your action aim. Dynamic movement pad, I don't think we need to talk about it, just turn it off. Go set your horizontal and vertical sensitivity to something high like 7, play around with that and then lower it progressively. 
Once you train or play in ranks TDM's diffuses, you will find out it's too high or too low. If you can't control your recoil, have a bad movement or you feel your aim jittery, then change it. Don't forget that you have aim acceleration that can help a lot. You can turn it on by enabling the advanced settings option. For example, you like a sensitivity but it's too low and you can't flick with it. Try add the aim acceleration. Set it to max then lower it until you see that you can flick 360 degrees or flick at 90 degrees. Lower it because you don't want a high aim acceleration that you don't need. If you can 360 with 70% aim acceleration or do any movements that you want to or you feel it's good to keep it but if you lower it, you just watch how your gameplay changes in worser and worser. I suggest you watch my last Critical Ops Explained video and see which type of player you are, a high sensitivity or a low one. Once you're done, play around with the scoped sense, maybe it's too high or too low and please consider all the scenarios like the far distance and the low distance ones. Now I suggest you turn on the button's block axis input, so you don't control the recoil from the button, only from your finger. Go to edit touch controls and set your controls optimally. If you don't press on this whole shooting button, then make it smaller, so it doesn't bother you while you play in a match. Put your unnecessary button somewhere you can't touch by mistake like the message button or the ping button, maybe the menu one. Now I suggest you firstly set your move button. Don't make it too small so you can't walk slowly. But again, don't set it to an unnecessary size. Place your thumb on the screen and where your thumb is naturally staying, put your button there. The goal is to be as close as possible to your corner. Now go for the buy and diffuse button. Place them close to your move button. Put your reload button in a corner that is easy to access and make your gun swap location smaller or bigger and then test it in a private match. I suggest you move on four fingers layout because you can control your recoil with a finger while shooting with another and crouching with another one while moving with another one. More than four fingers won't help you that much and it may just take unnecessary screen visibility. Imagine pressing the buttons with more fingers. You just put your finger in front of the screen like bro. If you use four fingers like this or like this, you use your fingers and have the best visibility because your fingers are not always in front of your screen. Now you have the best settings made by you for your own preferences. Everyone is different and we can't put everybody on the same settings. Some may play better on high sense, some may play better on a spider HUD. Now that I helped you, subscribe and like with the notice on and comment what else do you want to learn?